Hey, this is Jeremy with Archer Pressure Washing. Uh, I'm here to show you guys how to do a DIY uh, remote ball valve setup. Um, there's people out there that will charge like, 250 or $400 up soon for a setup that's pretty much the same thing as what I'm about to show you. Um, what I did cost me maybe 60 to 80 bucks. Um, so, I mean, that's most material. I guess if you want to add your time in, you know, it took me all of 30 minutes to do. Um, so, yeah, uh, this is my first video, so bear with me, and uh, let's get into it. Hi, everybody. I'm, uh, I'm here to show you guys how to make a DIY uh, motorized ball valve setup, remote ball valve setup for your... Uh, downstream injector so you don't have to run all the way back to the truck or have someone be all the way at the truck just to turn your soap on and on. There's plenty of videos out there like this so I just kind of figured I'd try my hand at it because well I'm making one right now anyway so might as well record it right. All right. So the first thing you're going to need is you're going to need some type of container. It really doesn't matter what just, I got this, it's five bucks at Harbor Freight. Uh, it's an ammo box. It has a uh, weather sealing in it. I'm gonna try and do it one-handed. It has a weather seal around it. And it has, you can lock it. I probably won't ever lock it, but it has a little lock spot for it. You're going to need a motorized ball valve and that's probably the most important thing because I guess theoretically you could just kind of put this anywhere it don't have to be in a container but you're going to need a ball valve. I got this uh, US solid one uh, that's the uh, model number there the MSV00029 um, make sure you get this one or just make sure you get one that is uh, how, how do they call it? Uh, an auto shut off. The first one I bought, I bought one that was a uh, reverse polarity to shut it off, and well, that doesn't work with my setup, so I had to return it and get this one. This is the remote, uh, I guess, receiver. And it, I'm going to put those here. So this would be where your battery would hook up to here and here. Uh, and then when you hit the on button, it would put power over to here. And when you do that, that engages this. It's pretty simple. Uh, I have a light. So I can see that it's on without having to walk all the way up to it. Or see that it's off. And the remote is, well the remote's out in the truck. but. It's just uh, the remote that goes with this guy. Uh, oh, and you're going to need some type of button or switch. I got this one because it has this little nice plug-in deal, so I can always unplug it. Um, and I have to unwire it or undo these wires off of there. Alright, the first thing we're going to do is kind of just come up with how we're wanting to set this up. Um, what I'm wanting to do is I'm going to put a, uh, I'm going to drill a hole somewhere on the box, probably right around here, and it's going to be for, so I can feed my uh, power wire that goes from my battery into it to power everything. And I'm going to I can show you how to do that, I guess, but I mean, I'm just drawing a hole, and I'm going to put a little grommet in it, but I figure uh, some, some here might as well. I'm sure someone out there is crying because I didn't measure, and I just kind of eyeball them. That should be plenty big. Sneak my wire in. 
Alright. Now. Alright, you want to drill your hole for your power line to come in from the battery. I'm just using speaker wire, it's 16 gauge. This is the fattest wire in this whole setup, so I'm sure it can handle the power. And I have it spliced in the shrink wrap tube to the green wire off of this switch plug. And this plugs into your power switch. You're then gonna want to from the end of that uh, plug down there, you're going to want to tie your red and yellow together, leave your black separate, and we're not using the white. So we got green going to the positive side of the battery. This yellow and uh, red here, that's going to be your power side on the, the uh, input on uh, this guy so your red and yellow is going to go here your black and your uh, negative from your battery is going to go here and then this is going to be for your outputs that's going to be the positives for your ball valve and your, I'm putting a light on this so I can tell that it's working. So it's going to be for the ball valve and the light. And then this is going to be the negative for the ball valve and the light. Alright, I got the uh, battery side hooked up. And next I'm going to hook up the ball valve and the uh, flashing light. Alright, so I did a little extra than just hooking up the uh, ball valve and the uh, light, but you can see in there, I got my, I got my ball valve and my light hooked up, I mount my ball valve, I went ahead and just hooked in put the clamps on, put little grommets in, it's pretty watertight, it's rain tight, that's my light, now I'm going to go out to the truck, hook it up to the battery, and show you how it works. Alright, we got my hoses plumbed up. This one is going to the uh, you know the tank, and then this one, the other one's going to my uh, chem injector. So to operate it, the first thing you gotta do is turn it on. Lights up. And then turn it on again. Turn it off. And then you can also turn it on. And then if you click this off, it also shuts off. This is closing the ball valve. So if it loses power, it closes the ball valve. So yeah, if you found this video helpful at all, i showing you how to put together your uh, remote ball valve switch. Uh, please consider leaving a like and subscribing. I do plan to do more pressure pressure washer related content in the future. Um, my next video I believe is going to be something along the lines of showing you guys
this in my truck and now I have it all set up. And I might explain, go and explain on why I did things to the way I did and what my plans for the future are because I'm definitely planning to upgrade soon. But that's all for now. Uh, see you.